the threat Taiwan faces from China is well covered. It's in the news, it's war game by militaries and analysts, and on YouTube, you'll find countless videos discussing every angle. What's more, when I sit down with high-ranking military officials and defense specialists, almost every single one of them has played out the scenario extensively. However, even with this extensive analysis, there's one aspect of the whole situation that no one is talking about. It's hardly on the news or YouTube. And even if you take a look at the most cited and quoted military analysis on the subject, it doesn't even mention it. And when I ask those same officials off the record about this part of the issue, their response is inevitably something like, Oh, okay. For this, I'm talking about an island that few have ever heard of, let alone considered geopolitically. And yet, a Chinese attack here would completely upend the status quo throughout Asia, raise a huge dilemma for US policymakers, and plunge US soft power in Asia right into a death spiral. I'm talking about a part of Taiwan that's not over here, but instead over here, an island called Kinmen. Whilst Kinmen is recognized as a part of Taiwan, it sits just a few kilometers from the Chinese mainland, just east of the bustling city of Xiamen. In fact, it's 30 times closer to Xiamen than it is to Taipei. From Kinmen, you can actually see the Chinese mainland. And yet, for 80 years, it's operated as a part of Taiwan, democracy and all. During China's civil war, the communists pushed their nationalist opponents out of mainland China. However, in addition to Taiwan, the Kuomintang were able to hold on to this island, even repelling an invasion with heavy losses to the attackers. Later on in the Cold War, the islands were again a place of conflict, with China openly shelling the islands. But today, those beach spikes, artillery and fortifications that once defended the island are all getting pretty old. And while during the Cold War, Taiwan garrisoned 100,000 troops on the island, today they only garrison around 2,500. The terrain of which presents few difficulties for the defenders, with no notable mountains or natural defenses to complicate things for any invader. So if the Chinese chose to attack with, say, an amphibious landing, preceded by a shock and awe missile campaign on a few targets, the estimates indicate that the whole campaign might likely be over in under 6 to 10 hours. And if all of this were to happen at a time when Western defense and strategic personnel were largely out of town or off duty, like during a Thanksgiving or Christmas period, for instance, when it would take longer to scramble the appropriate people, by morning, Kinmen's takeover would likely be a fait accompli. And even if Signal's intelligence gave the US a heads up, they'd have few military options to actually be able to stop it. There's no US troops on Kinmen or sufficiently nearby to be able to get there in time. And to those of you watching the war in Ukraine closely, a lot of this may be starting to sound eerily familiar. Back in February 2014, Russia launched a lightning assault on Crimea, employing forces with their Russian army markings hidden, in addition to private military companies, to carry out a swift takeover of the area. This was during a period when Putin was seeming to move closer to the West, even hosting the Winter Olympics just 200 miles away from where the assault was being launched. The Ukrainian garrison of around 20,000 soldiers, as well as many policymakers in the West, were completely caught off guard by this. And by the time Washington or Kiev could figure out how they should respond, the local garrisons had already surrendered. Yeah, the Ukrainian army of 2014 was pretty different to the one of 2022. These tactics allowed Russia to overwhelm Crimea in essentially two days, including its key naval bases and the 4 million residents living in the peninsula all without suffering a military response from the West. Okay, so back to Kinmen. Let's say it actually happens. We wake up one morning and Kinmen is now occupied by Chinese security services. At this point, the US faces a huge dilemma. Option one is to attack the island and try to take it back, following through on those ambiguous promises to defend Taiwan. But Kinmen, once taken by the Chinese, would be incredibly tough to take back, as it's right next to Chinese territory that's absolutely flooded with coastal batteries, missile launchers, and air defenses. And so taking it back by force would likely come at the cost of thousands of US casualties. As it is, the US Navy barely feels comfortable operating within the Taiwan Strait these days, largely due to a deluge of missiles sitting along the Chinese coast. That's also not to mention that we'd be looking at a direct conflict between the world's two biggest powers ultimately risking nuclear escalation, with all of this being for this small island. And this is where things become more complicated. 
When you poll the US public about their opinion of the US defending Taiwan, polls do indicate significant support, largely because Taiwan's a US ally, it's a democracy, and a big part of our economy's supply chain. However, ask those same people, should we disrupt the global economy and fight a war practically on the enemy's home turf, potentially costing thousands of US lives, the average dad from Wisconsin is probably going to answer no. However, as anyone who understands the game or real politique knows, there's more at stake here than just a small island. If the US, let's say, chose to do nothing and avoid a direct conflict with China, a whole new set of problems quickly emerge. For a moment, imagine Beijing invades and occupies the island. Inevitably, you will have news sites sharing imagery of Taiwanese residents from Kimen protesting this takeover or even being detained or mistreated by Chinese forces, which will also inevitably spark outrage and protests across multiple countries, as well as a million hot takes on YouTube. All of this unfolding as the United States does nothing, which to many will make the US look weak and ineffectual in this theater, with countries like Vietnam, the Philippines and Indonesia all taking pretty close note. They would see a China that has made a big move here and been relatively unchallenged, and there's a high chance that the policymakers within these countries might now view China as the ascendant power here in the Asian theater, and in turn could begin to adjust some of their current US-friendly policies, which in the case of the Philippines, could affect the US's ability to place bases, ships, and other hardware in one of the most pivotal positions in all of Asia. And to help further imagine the fallout from this, let's stay with the Philippines for a moment and consider what happened in 2012 when China took control of the Scarborough Shoal in the Philippines. It's a tiny, useless spit of rock, so uninhabitable that even a renter in New York wouldn't look at it. But nevertheless, in 2012, China seized the islands, just 140 miles from the Philippine mainland. And the US did very little to stop them, not wanting to start World War III over this. However, even today, this 2012 decision to let China take the shoal still haunts US-Philippine relations with Philippine diplomats and military officials bringing it up regularly with their Washington counterparts. And if that much damage came from the loss of what is, let's face it, a wet rock, imagine the backlash from failing to defend Kinmen, an island with actual inhabitants. What's more, think back in history to Saddam in 1980, who walked away from his invasion of Iran, mostly unpunished by the global community, only to then invade Kuwait and Saudi Arabia a few years later or Xi Jinping in 2012, who took the shoal mostly unpunished, and then went on to go occupy and build up military bases right across the South China Sea. Or think of Putin in 2014, whose smooth annexation of Crimea back then probably gave him the confidence to go do something far more stupid a few years later. All that being said, personally, I'm not sure what would happen if Kimmin would be seized by the PRC, as there really is no consensus here. All I can say is that about two thirds of the sources I spoke with about this suggest that the US would probably use it as a justification for deploying Marines and anti-ship missiles to the Taiwanese mainland in an effort to deter China from carrying out a similar invasion there. Which to me does seem like a reasonable do something option, giving the US some kind of response to the situation. But thinking back to our news coverage, it really doesn't do anything to alter the new fundamental reality. Kinmen would still be occupied by Chinese forces something our allies in Asia will remember. It really is a tough dilemma. I mean, just for a moment, step back and think about what option you would choose. Would you choose option one and stand up to aggression, risking an incredibly costly war? Or option two and do nothing, risking the appeasement of a country that might use this situation to peel your allies away from you or even possibly invade others in the future? It's pretty easy to see why most of these officials will do whatever they can to avoid being forced to pick between one of two very bad options. Thanks again for watching. If you enjoyed considering the strategic challenges within this one, next you should check out this video, taking you through the complications the US military would face carrying out an invasion of North Korea.